this video, I'm going to talk about SPI protocol. And SPI is a serial peripheral interface. And so this is a four-wire serial communication protocol. Um, similar to I2C, it operates with a single master device and one or more slave devices. Uh, it's synchronous communication, so there's a, a common clock signal that uh, the master and slave shares. And it's full duplex, so communication travels in both directions at the same time. Um, and specifically, I'm going to be using um, an Arduino talking to a Rayostat integrated circuit chip. And a Rayostat is basically a digital uh, potentiometer, a digital variable resistor. So I'm going to use SPI to set this uh, different resistant value outputs coming from that Rayostat chip. Okay, so this diagram describes the SPI interface. And for SPI, you're going to have one master. So that's here on the left in the orange. And then you can have one or more slaves. So in this diagram, I have three slaves. And they call it four wire because there's going to be a clock line, a master in slave out line, a master out slave in line, and then a chip select or slave select pin. And if you notice, for example, the clock pin is connected to all the devices. The clock is run by the master, and uh, each clock for each slave is connected to that bus. So they're all listening in on the same line. And the same is true for the, the master in slave out and the master out slave in lines. Those are all, all connected to each of the slaves. Okay, so the slave select pins are not are not connected like that so the master is going to have to have a slave select pin for each slave so SS1 connects to the SS on slave 1 SS2 connects to the slave select on slave 2 and SS3 connects to the slave select on slave 3 okay so the master out slave in that is when communication is going from the master to the slave. The master in slave out is uh, the opposite. Communication is going from a slave to the master. And like I said, the communication can be bidirectional and it is it's clocked in with this um, with this clock line. So the, the clock uh, generates square waves and um, the slave and master knows how to read from the MISO and MOSI um, based on the rising edge of that uh, clock um, or the falling edge and that kind of depends on the slave you're using and then um, generally the, the slave select um, the master when it wants to talk to a slave it's gonna send that slave select pin low normally the slave selects are high so when um, the master wants to talk to the slave, it, it sends it low, and that way uh, they can communicate. The slaves and masters don't talk to each other when their slave select pins are high. Okay, so to demonstrate the SPI protocol, I'm going to use an Arduino Uno, and I've hooked it up to this um, this chip. Okay, so this is a, a digital potentiometer, or rheostat, and it's model uh, MCP42. 010 zero, zero. and it's actually a dual digital potentiometer I'm only using one and I've got the wiper hooked up to this LED um, so okay so it's 14 pins uh, the dimple is up here it's kind of hard to see so that's the top of the chip so the pins go 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 pin 1 is the slave select or chip select and that's connected to the Arduino Uno pin 10 uh, pin 2 is the clock pin that's connected to Arduino pin 13. Uh, pin 3 is the master out slave in pin, and that's connected to Arduino pin 11. Pin 4 is uh, the ground. Okay, um, pins 5, 6, and 7 are the potentiometer pins. So uh, 5 can go to ground, 7 can go to VCC, which is 5 volts, and then 6, which is this gray wire, that's... That's like the if you use a just a analog type potentiometer, that's going to be the wiper pin. So that's gonna that's where the resistance is going to vary. The Arduino is going to 
use the SPI protocol to control the resistance on that pin. Okay, so these other three pins, um, 8, 9, and 10, that's the other potentiometer that we're not using. Um, pin 11 is the reset. Pin 12 shut down. Pin 13 is the master out, slave in. Um, excuse me, master in, slave out. And that's connected to the Arduino pin 12. This particular S chip does not talk back to the Arduino. I've hooked that line up, but it doesn't communicate back. So the communication for this SPI is one way. It's always from the Arduino to the chip, and the Arduino is going to tell the chip which, uh, which resistance to use for that potentiometer. And then um, pin 14 is the, the VCC, and that goes to 5 volts. And then I've also hooked up the, um, the SPI lines, kind of follow these wires around to this logic analyzer. Okay, so once we turn it on, we can look at the, uh, the signals going across the four SPI lines using that. Okay, so before we look at the uh, Arduino sketch, uh, real quick, this is the uh, data sheet for the uh, MCP42010 uh, digital potentiometer. And there's not a whole lot of commands that this uses. In fact, um, there's really only two. Okay, so this little diagram here shows the four the four uh, SPI pins, and so chip select goes low for this device, and the clock starts. That's driven by the master. Okay, so then the the master out slave in. So this is the Arduino talking to the chip. Is going to send first a command byte, and then a data byte. Okay, so if you look down here, this describes the command byte. And uh, half the bits aren't used. The first two most significant bits aren't used. Um, so these two bits, C0 and C1, are the command selection. So since there's two bits, there's four possible values. And, and if they're both 0, there's no command. And they're both 1, there's no command. If, the, if uh, C1 is 1 and C0 is 0, <clears throat> it's shut down. So write data is the one that you're generally going to use. So you would set uh, C1 to 0 and C0 to 1. Okay, and then these next two bits aren't used here. That's what those that's what those X's mean. Okay, and then these last uh, least significant bits are the potentiometer selection bits. So recall there's two potentiometers on here. Um, and uh, you, can, you can either... Um, send a command to one or the other or both or none if you want to I, there, there would be no point in that so this zero zero you can just ignore um, so if you send p1 to zero p0 zero to one it's going to be p the command is going to be potentiometer zero p1 is one p0 zero is zero command is going to be potentiometer one if they're both one then the command is going to be executed on both potentiometers okay so that's that's the first byte that gets sent on the MIS MOSI channel and then immediately after that is the data byte okay so that's just a value from 0 to 255 and that's gonna set the potentiometer value the one I'm using in the MCP 42010 is a 10 uh, kilo ohm maximum potentiometer so if you send 0 uh, it's gonna be 10 kilo ohms, send 255, it's going to be zero. That may be backwards. I may have to check that once I get into the source code. Okay, so this is the, um, the sketch I'm going to use. And, of course, we're going to include the SPI library. So we include SPI.h. Um, I set what the slave select, or also called the chip select pin, is here. So that's hooked into Arduino pin 10. Um, I'm going to have a delay of five milliseconds I get to that down in the loop what that's going to do okay so this is a command so we were just looking at the data sheet so I wrote this in in binary format so recall from the data sheet these first two bits don't do anything so we can set those to zero uh, these next two bits are the actual command and the command to write was uh, zero one uh, these two bits don't do anything and then these two bits tell which uh, potentiometer accepts the command so I have my circuit hooked up to potentiometer one so I set that to one zero so that's the command I'm going to use so then in the setup I initialize the SPI bus 
um, I set the slave select pin to output and then I set it high initially. So recall um, when it's high there's no communication. When it goes low that's when there's communication between the master and slave. Okay. <clears throat> then we set the bid order for the SPI protocol most significant bit first and this is generally going to depend on the slave you're using and so for the chip I'm using most significant most significant bit first okay so um, I'm going to skip down to the loop real quick and all this is doing is blinking that um, uh, LED so I'm going to have two loops. I'm going to start at A0 and A goes to 255 and then I'm going to call set value okay and then set value I'm going to pull the slave select low so that starts the communication and then SPI transfer is how you write um, bytes so I'm going to write that command byte that's saying I want to write a value to potentiometer 1 call that's what this command is saying and then I'm going to send it the value that was passed in. So, so those values are going to go from 0 to 255. And then down here, it's going to reverse, go from uh, 255 to 0. Okay, so it writes that value. And then, then I bring the slave select pin back high. Uh, so that ends the communication. So yeah, this, this loop is going to just um, send that potentiometer... Uh, Start at zero ohms and then increase it to when it gets to 255, that's going to be 10k ohms. So when it's 10k ohms, you know, you're not the light's going to be you're not going to be able to see any anything on that LED. And then then this is obviously going to be the re reverse. Um, it starts at 10 kilo ohms and goes down to zero ohms. And I put this delay in here, and that's how fast it's going to flash. So remember that's. Uh, five milliseconds between each value. Okay, so this is the Celia Logic Analyzer software. And like I said at the beginning of the video, I have the Logic Analyzer uh, connected to the, the four SPI lines. So I'm gonna hide these real quick. Okay, so channel zero is master out, slave in, channel one, master in, slave out, channel two is the clock, and channel three is the slave select or chip select. And <clears throat> it's going to be triggered um, when the chip select signal goes low. So that's how um, that's how we set this up. And I'm going to collect data just for four seconds. Um, what else? Okay, so I have the SPI analyzer set up here for decimal. Okay. So when I plug... Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and start. So it's waiting for that chip select pin to go low and Arduino's not plugged in yet so I'm gonna plug that in let's see okay so now it's collecting data for four seconds okay so okay so like I said before there's no communication from <clears throat> the um, the slave to the master so channel one for this chip is going to always be low so for other SPI devices you would see a lot of activity on here as well okay so kind of go back to the beginning okay so this is if you remember in the sketch where I send the slave select low that's when communication is going to start okay and then so this is the clock line and so it's set four megahertz um, and the Arduino is running that clock. And for this, I'll just throw this in here. For this software, it says you should, or for this uh, logic analyzer, your sample rate should be four times uh, the frequency of the data you're collecting. So um, the clock is at four megahertz. So that's why I set this to 16 uh, megahertz. Or excuse me, yeah, mega samples per second. So megahertz. Okay, so. Um, Okay, so if we look up here at 18, let me turn this to binary, and then we can see. So that's remember there's a there's the command bit, excuse me, command byte, and then the data byte, and so that's that zero 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 one zero zero one zero. That was the command byte to write the potentiometer one. Okay, and so 
these are the these are the bits for that byte. So the um, they go low, high, and um, and then we send it the data byte. So this is in that loop. The first value is just zero. Let me maybe go back to decimal now. All these command the command byte is never going to change. Recall that's always going to be the same. It's these values that are going to change. So if we go back to decimal, so it sends zero. Okay, and then we go to the next to the next one. Okay, so that's the command in decimal 18. And then the value is 1. And it's just going to um, keep repeating that 18. And then 2. So it's going to go all the way up to 255. And then go back down from 255 to 0. And you can kind of see over here what's going on. So like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. All the way up and um, so the software also let's see it gives the the value in milliseconds between these writes so it's at 5.021 milliseconds so recall that's that's the delay I had in in the, in the uh, in the sketch I was delaying for five which is five milliseconds so you can see that varies just a little but it's 5.025 5.021 so that's that's the time between each of these each of these calls so anyway that's uh that's just an example of uh, how SPI works thanks for watching the video